day students today we shall look into the vibrational spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy of a diatomic vibrating rotator the molecule is vibrating along with rotator so first about the diatomic vibrating rotator now even though in the previous sessions we learnt about uh, a molecule that vibrates alone or a molecule that rotates alone in reality when a molecule is excited it vibrates along with its rotational motion as shown here that is the rotational energy changes may also accompany the vibrational energy changes now according to the bohr oppenheimer approximation the molecule can rotate and vibrate independently that is its energies can be taken as the sum of vibrational energy and rotational energy given as eta j v is equal to eta j plus eta v units is centimeter inverse that of wave number so since the molecule and uh, can rotate and vibrate independently its energies can be just summed up and that sum is represented as eta of j comma v j is the quantum number for rotational energy levels and v is the quantum number for vibrational energy levels now writing the sum we can get the equation eta j comma v is equal to eta j is represented for by these two terms and eta v is represented by these two terms so we get v into j into j plus 1 minus d into j square into j plus 1 square plus v plus half nu e bar minus v plus half square x e nu e bar centimeter inverse here the quantum numbers j and v can have integral values ranging from 0 to infinity 0 1 2 3 etc now the energy level of the molecule is given by this expression eta j comma v and the molecule when it's excited it should follow certain selection rules and they are given for the quantum numbers for rotational energy the selection rule is delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 whereas for vibrational energy level transitions the selection rule is that of an unharmonic oscillator that is delta v is equal to plus or minus 1 comma plus or minus 2 comma plus or minus 3 etc okay now let us assume that the molecule is being excited it is absorbing energy and for that uh, let j prime represent the rotational energy levels in the upper vibrational level and let j double prime represent the rotational energy levels in the lower vibrational energy level we shall see that that is we have two vibrational energy levels v equal to 0 this level and v equal to 1 this level and the rotational energy levels in the lower v equals 0 vibrational energy is represented by j double prime and the rotational energy levels in the upper vibrational energy v equals 1 is represented by j prime okay now in the case of absorption we have delta v should be plus 1 that is molecule is absorbed from v equals 0 energy level to v equals 1 state so for that the change in energy can be written as delta eta of j comma v that is equal to the final level minus initial level so final level is this one whereas this is the initial level so we can write eta of j is j prime comma 1 we has the value 1 minus eta of 
j double prime comma v has the value zero. J double prime comma zero. That is now substituting for eta j prime comma one. Here for j we substitute j prime and for v we substitute one. So we get v into j prime into j prime plus one minus d into j prime square into j prime plus one whole square plus here we have one plus half that is three by two new e bar minus one plus half square that is three by two square nine by four x c new e bar minus eta of j double prime comma zero now in this expression again substitute j double prime for j and zero for v we get b j double prime into j double prime plus 1 minus of minus that is plus d into j double prime square into j double prime plus 1 whole square then we have minus we are subtracting the term here so we have minus 0 plus half that is half new e bar then minus of minus gives plus uh, 1 by 2 square that is 1 by 4 xc new e bar now rearranging these terms we can write delta eta j comma v is equal to b into now this becomes j prime square plus j prime here again that term here becomes minus of j double prime square minus j double prime that is given here then the next term minus d into we have j prime square into j prime plus 1 square this is here and here we have uh, i'm taking minus d outside so we have minus of J double prime square into J double prime plus one square. Yes. Then we need to close the brackets here. Okay. Then the next term is plus. Uh, we have three by two new e bar minus one by two new e bar. That is two by two new e bar. That is new e bar. And we have minus nine by four x c new e bar plus one by four x c new e bar. That is minus eight by four x c new e bar minus two x c new e bar. So taking new e bar common outside, we have one minus two x e. Thus, this expression can be uh, written as delta eta j comma v is equal to. Uh, now this term. Is represented as new e bar into one minus two x c can be written as new not bar, the fundamental oscillation frequency plus b into. Now in this term, I'm taking out j minus j double prime as a common factor, so I'm having here the next term plus j prime square minus j double prime square. It is the form of A square minus b square, so I can write it as a plus b into a minus b. So we'll have this a minus b term here, that is j prime minus j double prime as a constant there too. So taking that also outside, we get j prime minus j double prime into remainder. There is one plus j prime plus j double prime. That a plus b factor minus d into here. There is a common factor of um, j prime square here. Then j prime plus one whole square. That's all. Minus j double prime square into j double prime plus one whole square. Okay, and the unit here is centimeter. Now, let us 
calculate the frequency of transition using this expression. Now, for delta j is equal to plus 1, till now we had only given the selection rule for vibrational energy. Delta v is equal to plus 1. Now, we are going to give the selection rule for rotational energy. Delta j is equal to plus 1. It implies that the difference between the energy levels, upper energy level minus lower energy level, is equal to plus 1. Now, in the earlier equation, we can substitute all j prime terms as 1 plus j double prime. So, substitute that we will get delta eta j comma v is equal to first term nu naught bar plus v into here we have substitution 1 plus j double prime minus j double prime into again here 1 plus j double prime plus j double prime plus 1 minus d into 1 plus j double prime whole square into 1 plus j double prime plus 1 the whole square minus j double prime whole square into j double prime plus 1 whole square. Now rewriting we get here these terms cancel out right. Then here we have uh, j, 2 j double prime plus 2. So 2 is a common term here. Taking it out I have 2 b into j double prime plus 1, then minus, here I have this term 1 plus j double prime square common in both terms. So I am taking that outside. Then remaining I have j double prime plus 2 the whole square here. a plus b whole square form. On expanding it I can write j double prime square plus 4 j double prime plus 4 minus j double prime square. So this term will cancel out with the term here. And then I have 4 as a common term here. Taking 4 commonly out, I will have j double prime plus 1 remaining there. This is similar to this term. So we have this term j double prime plus 1 cube here. Thus, Delta eta j comma v is equal to mu naught bar plus 2 b into j double prime plus 1 minus 4 d into j double prime plus 1 whole cube centimeter inverse. Here j double prime is just the rotational quantum number and it can have values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. So this rotational energy shift can come from any of these energy levels. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Now for different J double prime values, we get the spectral lines in R branch. That is, for uh, the transition from J double prime equal to 0 to J prime equal to 1. Here we need to mention only uh, these values for j double prime and uh, this level is inherently understood because here we have said delta j will be plus 1. So if I start from 0 here it should end in 1 here. Now the next one if I start from 1 here j double prime is 1 then the upper level j prime should be 2 since delta j is plus 1. Again, if I start in the j double prime equal to 2 level here, I will be excited to j prime equal to 3 level. Likewise, the other transitions. And for all of these transitions, we obtain lines in the spectrum. And the, those lines are called the R branch lines. Now, let us look into um, the other case for delta j is equal to minus 1. Here, the change in the uh, energy levels, that is uh, j prime minus j double prime 
is equal to minus 1. Then the change in the rotational energy levels is minus 1. Okay. That means uh, the molecule is still being excited from V0 equal to V equals 1. And in that, we have delta J is equal to minus 1. It implies uh, if J double prime is 1, J prime will be 0. Okay. J double prime is 2, then it will be excited to J prime equals 1. So, here let us, let us write down the uh, energy equation. Here we substitute J double prime as 1 plus J prime. So, we get delta eta J comma V is equal to nu naught bar plus V into J prime minus J double prime is being substituted. So, I have minus of 1 minus of J prime into J prime plus 1 plus J prime plus 1 minus V into J prime square into J prime plus 1 whole square minus. Then we have substitutions that is 1 plus J prime square into 1 plus J prime plus 1 whole square. Rearranging we get delta eta j comma v is equal to nu naught bar minus. Here what come, happens is this term cancels out and I have this minus 1 here. So we have this minus sign here. Again in this term I have j prime 2 j prime plus 2. Taking 2 commonly outside I have minus 2 b into j prime plus 1. Then the next term is plus uh, d into now this term j prime plus 1 whole square is common here too. That is taken outside. Then the remaining term j prime square minus j prime plus 2 whole square. So here I have a minus j prime square. It will cancel out this term. Then I have a minus 4 j prime minus 4. Taking minus sign outside, this becomes plus. So I have plus and taking 4 outside, I have 4 d into j prime plus 1 whole cube centimeter inverse. Here the quantum number rotational quantum number j prime can have value 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The transitions that obey this selection rule is shown uh, here and these transitions form the spectral lines in P branch. That is from j double prime is 1 to j prime 0. The other is from j double prime 2 to j prime 1. Likewise, these other transitions. And all of these transitions produce spectral lines in the spectrum and those lines are called the P branch lines. Now, let us try to summarize. Here, the frequency of transition can be generalized into Delta eta of delta j is equal to plus 1 comma v. It is equal to nu naught bar plus 2b into m minus 4d into m cube centimeter inverse. Here j plus 1 term is substituted as the integer m. And these transitions correspond to the R branch, whereas these transitions are shown here and delta eta of delta j equals minus 1 from our V is given as nu naught bar minus 2bm plus 4dm cube centimeter inverse. These transitions correspond to the P branch. Now here we said that M is substituting for J plus 1 term. 
it may be j prime plus 1 or j double prime plus 1 it is the same and m here can have values 1 2 3 etc it cannot have the value 0 because if m is equal to 0 according to this relation j should be equal to minus 1 and that state is not possible okay there is no j equal to minus 1 state hence we have that m cannot be equal to 0 and if m cannot be equal to 0 we will never get an equation that is having the value of mu naught bar only that is we can say that delta eta is equal to nu naught bar such an equation is never possible because these terms they never be, become zero okay hence we do not expect or observe a spectral line at nu naught bar in the spectrum now furthermore the value of d is very small compared to the value of b and hence it may be neglected so this is the nature of the spectrum that we obtain. This shows the R branch and this shows the P branch. They are numbered as such. The center, we do not have any spectral line there, but that is called the Q point. And on the right side of it, we have the lines R0, R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. And on the left side, we have the lines P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, etc. Now, these lines, this one, this particular line is termed R0 because it is the first R branch line starting from J equals to 0 level. The other one is the line starting from J equals 1. And likewise, here we have this first line at P1 because the, this is the first P line, spectral line, starting from J equals 1. Okay, that is why we do not have a P0 line here. P cannot start from the 0 J level. Since it has to obey, delta J is equal to minus 1. Now, so summarizing, we get the frequency of transition uh, delta eta of delta j is equal to plus 1 comma v is equal to nu naught bar plus 2 bm for the r branch and delta eta for delta j is equal to minus 1 comma v is equal to nu naught bar minus 2 bm for p branch. Now in the r branch lines, for m equals 1, I get the first spectral line, this line. Hence, the expression is delta eta j comma v for the first spectral line r naught is equal to nu naught bar plus 2v. Likewise, for m equals 2, we get the second spectral line. And the expression here becomes delta eta j comma v for r1 is equal to nu naught bar plus 4b. You should write down as I am explaining these equations. Now likewise in the p branch lines for m equals 1 we get the first line p1 and the expression there is delta eta j comma v for p1 is equal to nu naught bar minus 2b from this expression. And for m equals 2, the expression is delta eta j comma v for p2 is equal to nu naught bar minus 4b and represents the second spectral line on the left side of the center. Here on the center, we do not observe any uh, spectral lines. Hence, nu naught bar is absent. Now, in this spectrum, let us try to measure the spacing between, the distance between these spectral lines. So, the spacing between P1 and P2 lines are shown here, can be calculated as 
delta eta j comma v of p1 minus delta eta j comma v of p2. I take p1 as the higher energy and p2 as the lower energy because this is the direction of increasing energy. So, energy of p1 minus p2 gives nu naught bar minus 2b minus nu naught bar plus 4b. This is equal to 2b. So, the spacing between these two lines is 2b. Now, the spacing between the R0 and R1 lines as shown here, R0 and R1 lines can be calculated as delta eta j comma v of R1 minus delta eta j comma v of R0. Higher energy is of R1 and R0 is having lower energy. So, their equations give uh, for R1 nu0 bar plus 4b minus nu naught bar minus 2b. This is equal to 2b. Again, spacing between these two r naught r1 lines is 2b. Now, the spacing between r naught and p1 lines, that is, this and these lines, can be calculated from delta eta j comma v for r naught minus delta eta j comma v for p1. Substituting equations, I get nu naught bar plus 2b minus nu naught bar plus 2b. This is equal to 4b. Hence, the distance between these two lines, r naught and p1, is 4b. So, from this spectrum, if I can get, I can measure this 4b distance. I will get uh, the value of rotational constant B and from the half value of it, I can calculate the band origin nu naught bar. And thus, we can evaluate the bond length R from rotational constant P and the force constant K from nu naught bar. These are the data derived from the vibrational spectrum. Now, usually when we take a vibrational spectrum or infrared spectrum, we obtain lines as shown here. Uh, moreover, the lines might be very nearly spaced that we may not be able to measure the distance between uh, the nearby P lines or nearby R lines in order to get a measure of B, right? To get a measure of B, we need to measure the distance between the first P and R line, to get, so we get 4B. If those lines are not uh, clear, then we try to measure the distance between nearby P lines or nearby R lines. Again, if those lines are very near, we can't measure the distance to B. Okay, so if we have such a closely packed spectrum, what we do is, we try to find the line having the maximum intensity in the R branch and P branch. Okay. So here, I get a, an a idea of the, that the maximum is around this point and the maximum in the P branch is around this point. Okay. So by measuring those maximas and finding the distance between them, I can get the measurement for the rotational constant B. So let's see how we do that. Now, according to the uh, um, uh, spec rotational spectrum, we have the expression for the J value having maximum intensity line. And that was given as J equals root of KT by 2 BHC minus half. This J line will ha be having the maximum intensity. Now, substituting this value here, in the place of m, I can write m is equal to j plus 1. That is, m is equal to root of this term minus half plus 1. It implies root of kt by 2 bhc plus half. Now, substituting for m in the equation for energy, 
this is the value of m where the energy is maximum hence delta eta j comma v maximum maximum intensity line will be obtained by substituting for this m value in this expression that is nu not bar plus or minus 2 bm plus represents the r branch and minus represents the p branch so that is equal to nu not bar plus or minus 2b into square root of kt by 2 bhc plus half now the spacing between the r max and the p max lines is taken as uh if i take the plus term here it corresponds to the r branch and if i take the minus term here it corresponds to the p branch hence i can write delta eta com of j comma v uh, where r max minus delta eta of j comma v for p max the spacing can be written as nu not bar plus 2b root of kt by 2 bhc plus taking product here plus b minus of nu not bar then minus for p branch 2b into root of kt by 2 bhc minus b okay rearranging the nu not bar terms cancel out and uh, we have these terms 2b into root of kt by 2 bhc again 2b into root of kt by 2 bhc again here i have b and again b so 4b into root of kt by 2 bhc plus 2b taking 2b um outside or in other words not outside i'm going to take this 4b into the square root so it becomes 16b square within here right now 16 will cancel out with 2 and form 8 b square will uh, be divided by b to form b hence i can write square root of 8 b kt by hc plus 2b now by uh, measuring the distance between the maxima of the two r and p branches the spacing ca is calculated as this term root of 8b kt by hc plus 2b so from that we get a measure for the rotational constant b that's all for today's session thank you